All right, today we're gonna to walk through how to build your own do-it-yourself dri external drive storage case. If you're like me and uh, maybe you have a home lab or a bunch of old computers sitting around, you might find yourself with a bunch of old hard drives that you've accumulated over the years and you're wondering, hey, I don't have enough room in my PC case to use these drives, and maybe you wanna set up a NAS, play with some different software like I just did with Unraid. You're like, I wanna use these drives and I don't know how to put them somewhere. So it's actually really straightforward to build a separate case for these drives, provide power to them, and then connect them up to your main PC. So that's what we're gonna walk through today. And this can be done uh, super cheaply. Like me, the only thing you need to buy is a couple cables and uh, a card, which we'll get to. And most of these you can find on eBay for relatively cheap. And the first thing you're gonna need is, well, uh, some old hard drives and some old uh, SATA drives will do. Not terribly old, but uh, you know, I've used ones up to 10 years old at this point. And then uh, you will need a case. Uh, if you have an old PC case lying around with a power supply, that will do the job. You can take the motherboard right out of that case, which I did. If you're doing a, a rack mount solution and you actually wanna invest a little more money in this, companies like Rose will offer a variety of rack mounted external storage case options that are pretty affordable. Now, obviously that case will need a power supply. And then if you're using a PC power supply, you're probably gonna want one of these little jumper devices to actually get the power supply to start without a motherboard attached. Of course, if you if you wanna just use the paperclip method, I did for a little bit and that works too, but you can get one of these jumpers really cheap and it'll neaten up your setup just a little bit. Now, the heart of this is going to be an HBA, HBA card. And this is gonna be the card that you put in your main PC and allows you to connect the external drive case. And so what is an HBA if you're not familiar with it? An HBA stands for host bus adapter. And basically this is a card that connects a host system like your PC to another uh, storage device. It acts as a translator between the system's internal bus like PCI and the external devices. Now you'll see these in enterprise class uh, JBOG configurations with uh, HBAs and you know enterprise level storage cases. And actually, if you go on eBay, which is what I did when I headed down this path, I was like, hey, I can get a super cheap external drive enclosure, you know, an old one out of a data center like I had done with some of my old servers, but they are extremely expensive and did not offer anything additional that I needed. Go look on eBay. You're gonna see that you can spend a whole lot of money on uh, these storage cases. My personal view is like, just grab some old PC hardware. You don't need to invest a ton of money in this. You will need an HBA card. And I found HBA cards actually to be very confusing because I, yeah, I looked around and everyone's like, oh, you need an LSI like 9207-8E or whatever it was. And I didn't know what that actually meant. So let me just walk you through it real quick. You'll typically get recommended an HBA card with an LSI chipset. And LSI, I think, has become Broadcom. And then there are a number of other manufacturers are OEMs for LSI and or Broadcom. And so Dell makes them, HP makes them. And what you'll find recommended online for the home lab are to use a set of LSI cards, which are basically no longer developed. They're probably about 10 years old at this point. You're going to find them used on eBay. You may be able to find some also used on Amazon. Since they're so old, finding like information on them is a little confusing, especially when you look against, you know, modern uh, HBA card. So what I did is uh, up on the screen here, I just threw together some information on some common LSI cards that allow you to look around and you can figure out what's right for you. So you can see one is like the LSI 9207E 8E. And typically what differentiates these cards is the number of drives you can attach, like the number of external ports, and if they're internal external ports. So you could actually have an HBA card and connect your drives internally. Uh, the E at the end of the part number says this is for external connection. So that's what you want to use when connecting to an external drive enclosure. And as you can see in this table, they'll differentiate themselves by the PCI uh, bus speed they use and the SAS speed they support. Now, so what you want to look at is like, what's the speed of the drives you're using? Adjust your uh, HBA card accordingly. So I, and how many drives do you have? So you can see here, if you look at 92058E, this is only supporting six gigs per second. Well, there are some other models that go up to 12. If you're just using old SATA drives, 
drives, you, you probably don't need much more than six. The other thing to remember on an HBA card is you'll see, you'll come across something called IT mode and they have two different modes like IT mode and RAID mode and they can operate as a RAID controller. But for a, a storage case, you're gonna want to run the card in IT mode, which stands for initiator transmitter. And it basically just exposes the drives directly to your machine. It's not doing any RAID on top of it, et cetera. So your machine will see each drive and then you can do what you want with them inside your OS configuration. I went with LSI 9207AE, which I picked up on eBay. Actually, there's gonna be more of a story on that. I'll just say that is one of the HBA cards I used. And then you'll need some cables to connect your the drives to your HBA card. Now, when you connect the drives to your HBA card, you'll wanna make sure you grab the cables with the right connector on the HBA side. In case of the LSI cards I was talking about, they use an SFF8088 connector, as you can see here on the screen, and then it has four SATA connectors on the end. So what you'll want is, again, depending on the number of drives, you'll want one of these cable harnesses for each port and number of drives you plan to attach. So for example, in the image here, I'm showing you a cable uh, with four drives. And so if I had eight, I would need two of these. And then obviously I'd need to make sure my HBA card has at least two slots on the back. And that would allow me to connect eight drives. Now, of course you can get HBA cards that have, I think I uh, well, the second one I got had four ports on the back, each allowing four drives. So that would allow me to add a total of 16 drives. Again, you can size the card for your configuration, then uh, go grab the appropriate cables. And the one other thing I'll comment on is as you're going through looking at HBA cards, make sure they're compatible with the operating system you're going to be using. In my case, I was using uh, Linux. I used Unraid in some cases, and just make sure driver support is there. Most of the LSI cards that I previously referenced have been around quite a long time. And so there is robust support within Linux. In my experience, I just plugged them in and the OS found them. But if you're using uh, Windows or something else, you might just want to double check that before you go through and purchase one of these cards. Now that you have all the parts and setting it up is pretty straightforward. You just go ahead and drop all of your drives into your external case, connect the power to those drives, use the jumper that you bought or the paper clip if that's what you want to get the power supply working if you're using a PC power supply. Put the HBA card into your main PC and then use the cables to wire it all together. And what I did is I removed the motherboard from my secondary case and I just routed the, the cables, in the SATA connectors in through the back of the PC case and through the drives and it worked great. That should pretty much be it. Then you could start your OS and confirm that the card is recognized by the OS. And if you're using Linux, you can do that. Use D message after the OS is started or LSPCI or two good starting points just to confirm that you see the card on the bus. And then when you're using D message, one thing you'll want to look for is you can do like a D message and grab for like SAS or SATA. And what you'll want to look for is a message that says the card is operating in IT or initiator target mode. And if you find it is not operating in initiator target mode, you'll need to go reflash the card with IT firmware. What I'm kind of going through now is really specific to the LSI cards. There may be a different procedure for other cards. I will say if you have the opportunity to purchase a card that is already flashed with IT firmware, you're going to save yourself quite a bit of trouble. Many, the two cards that I picked up on eBay during my experimentation were both already flashed with IT firmware, so they worked fine. But this isn't a setting you can just change in the card, at least with the LSI cards I played with. You actually need to get different firmware if you want to run the card in RAID mode or IT mode. And so that means if you get a card set up for RAID mode, you're going to have to go find the firmware and reflash it. Now, remember, you're probably dealing with a card which is upwards of a decade old. So first, finding the drivers on the Broadcom site for LSI cards is not the easiest thing, but they are there, believe it or not. And then actually getting the Flash software working for me was a pain in the butt. Um, you either need to go through the UEFI BIOS, you need to figure out how to get a boot drive working. And I'll tell you, I tried using FreeDOS to get a boot drive working. I tried all kinds of things and never got it working particularly well until I ended up making a Windows recovery drive and was able to get to a command prompt to run the flashing software and reflash my card. Now I reflashed my card just to make sure I had the most up-to-date firmware. It was in IT mode from the start. To tie it all back, you can either check this ahead of time when you purchase the card or when you start up your OS, if it's Linux, check D message, confirm it shows that it's in IT mode and should be fine. And after that, 
The drives uh, should just show up in your operating system, just like any other drives, and you can go ahead and configure them as you will. If it's in Unraid, for me, they just popped right up in Unraid. True NAS, I didn't get to try, but I'm sure it'd be exactly the same thing. So cheap, easy, great way to reuse some extra hardware you, having around, you have around and build yourself a storage array. Now, here's where the nightmare began for me. I did everything I described abo above, and it went horribly wrong. I picked up my HBA card. I got everything that I described. I put it in, and in this case, I was using Unraid. I put it in uh, to the OS, and the OS saw it right away. LSPCI showed me it was on the bus, no problem. It identified it correctly. When I ran dmessage, I saw all the right things. I could confirm the card was running in IT mode, and I could confirm the card had the latest firmware. The latest firmware was about 10 years old, but it absolutely was the latest, but it would not consistently recognize the drives I attached to it. And it caused me an endless nightmare, probably lost a couple days trying to debug it. So I initially added, I think I put probably four or six drives onto the HBA card and it's all like two or three. This was in Unraid. The drives worked fine, by the way. Uh, the, it was able to format them, put data on them, it was fine but it didn't see all the cards. And when I'd reboot the machine, I would get a different set of drives. Sometimes I would get fewer, sometimes I would get drives I hadn't seen before. And this started the whole debug loop of like, is it the cables, is it the connectors? I started trying all kinds of different combinations of how to attach the drives to the connectors using different ports, one port combinations of ports, splitting the drives across ports, and eventually, you know, worked it down to the case like, can I just get one drive consistently working through the HBA? And the answer was no no matter what I did. I even, and I kind of alluded this to this before, I reflashed the firmware on one HBA card. Then I looked and I thought I had purchased uh, cables that were too long. So I actually went and purchased shorter cables. No luck. Then I figured I must have gotten a dud HBA card off of eBay and it was old. So I actually went further and I purchased another HBA card off of eBay and the exact same thing happened. The OS recognized it and no luck. I could not get it to consistently see drives and went through all of that trial and error again. So you know what? In the end, I never got it working. And I'll be honest, I gave up. I'll, I will say the one thing I'd never tried was reflashing the firmware on the drives themselves. The drives were pretty old, I think 10 years in some cases, and they likely had new firmware. And I kind of just threw my hands up at this one. And what I did is I ended up just, I, I found a card with some uh, extra SATA ports internally. and I threw it in. I just added a couple more drives to my Unraid server. I still have several drives lying around I'm not able to use. So I just had to put that project aside for a minute. What I would say is if you go down this path, like I said at the top, this is actually really easy. And everything I read online and the threads on Reddit made it sound like a no-brainer. Be thoughtful about how old your drives are. Make sure they have the most current firmware and recognize that you are playing with stuff which is a bit older. And so I think your mileage may vary and it may not be worth your time and effort to go through this and then just have it not work. So that's it. If you decide to give this a try, I'd love to hear if it worked for you. I'd actually love to hear if any of you tried this and had similar problems of drives just randomly not being available and how you solved it. This project was put away for a little bit. So let me know how it worked out for you in the comments down below and we'll see you next time.